This module is specific to using the matrix gait trainer with spinal cord injuries or SEI. Now, this can be a little bit tricky because spinal cord injuries can either be incomplete or complete and patient presentation could be completely flaccid, spastic, there's a lot of different things. So I'm gonna be talking more about the flaccid component and, and assuming that there's some sort of incomplete, uh, whether it's a full uh, SCI, maybe transverse myelitis, other spinal cord conditions, uh, possibly even MS, but th these are good ways to utilize this device as a way to start um, initiating full weight bearing versus being strapped up in a harness, hanging from the ceiling, uh, or even things that support you too much, not uh, giving your brain enough information on what's going on. So I like this device specifically for the paralysis component. Now I'll talk about using bracing, because a lot of times when people initially start walking, they're having to use either AFOs or bilateral KFOs. Now, in, in each of the two, you can use them for both. Um, so with KFOs, even if they're locked in, in full extension, this is great because it allows them to feel what sliding that foot forward feels like and also showing them how to weight shift appropriately. Um, so as we're going through this, depending on if it's one side affected, both sides affected, typically we're fine with both sides. So we would strap both feet in and we wanna make sure that the person started in sitting, whether it's in a wheelchair, in a regular chair, strap them on the side. And then once they're up and standing, this would be the position. So because there's a lot of compensatory movements that initially happen with those with spinal cord injuries walk, with this, since we do have them in full weight bearing, it does allow them to feel the ground and also work on weight shifting to appropriately start uh, applying those uh, gait mechanics to actually advance the like forward, whether it's um, ex you know, using to, so much of the hip to move forward, maybe it's a little bit of trunk, um, or actually utilizing the muscle that they, you know, the hip flexors that advance the leg forward. So in this position, assuming that I have bilateral KFOs, the guarding technique, if you're behind them, you can help them shift. If you need to help them keep tension on the walker uh, to keep the bungees tight, you're gonna wanna put quite a bit of tension on the bungees adjusting here at the bottom, depending on the, the severity of the paralysis in the patient. So they really don't have anything going on, then we're gonna put it pretty tight as a way for them to also see the foot go forward. So we all also wanna encourage this. So in this position, you know, only using one practitioner, guarding, I'm gonna make sure that initially I'm going to add a little bit of tension. So the walker is gonna be about six inches or so in front of me. And I'm just gonna worry about weight shifting the person in order to bring the foot forward. Okay, after that, I'm still facilitating, walking, and it's gonna help bring the other foot forward. So trying, for me trying not to activate at all, I still get about half, about three quarters of a step through uh, pattern. So with someone who has a little bit more, let's say they're initiating 25, 50%, it should help them get a little bit more. You might see some twisting as a PT, you'll be able to correct that. But ultimately, as they start to learn, they start to learn more so how to weight shift and start to bring in more activating hip flexors, abs, and all those other things that will help you drive that uh, leg forward versus being suspended or using other devices that maybe have a chair that don't uh, incorporate full knee extension, full upright body posture. This is a great tool to allow them over time to see what it feels like to move forward versus going into a lot of other compensatory uh, strategies. When we're thinking about um, Going back into the, the flaccid uh, component of the legs, we're also considering the arm. So we will uh, adjust the armrest to the height that we need to, um, but also understanding we're looking at more um, incomplete injuries in the cervical spine. Uh, if they are complete, they should have a little bit more abs. Um, so anything below, you know, T7, T8, and um, just, Keeping that in mind when you get them up, it's gonna be, you're basically determining how much guarding you're gonna need, but ultimately the bungees will do the work. So they're not overexerting themselves based on the amount of tension you put on the uh, bungees. So even if you have to crank them all the way up and it flings their leg forward, it's enough for their brain to process that movement and they're still getting more steps per trial during a gait training than they would typically would when they're suspended maybe like at 25 or 30%. They're only getting that 25 or 30% of information to the brain. 
Now we're going to cover the spastic component. Now, I recommend patients with medium to lower intensity spasticity, this will be appropriate. Those with really severe, severe spasticity, it's not going to be working so well. Um, for the reason being that if this is pulling them forward and they're having extra tone, this may increase the tone. Um, with those with medium to lower intensity spasticity, it works really well. If they're in the brace, if they're not in the brace, uh, maybe we have a spinal cord injury who has a little bit more return uh, on the lower body to where you don't need the KFOs, you just need to facilitate. This is also a good way for them to not circumduct, scissor, all these other things. So same same approach once they're standing, making sure that the, the walker's slightly away, the tension is where you want it. And then focusing on weight shifting them first and allowing them to relax. If they have more activation, they may want to try to resist. That'll start going away by the second or third trial because their brain will understand a little bit more how to relax and allowing that leg to move forward. So the same concept. As I keep advancing the walker forward, that tension increases and it allows my feet to continue to move forward without me having to overstrain. So this is perfect with those with some activation in the lower body. Um, to start off initially with more steps, uh, more distance versus someone who's more flaccid, you may have to stick, uh, stick to a uh, shorter distance, you know, five to 10 feet for them to start getting that uh, motor programming um, as they attempt to use the matrix skate trainer.